Well, uh, first of all, I would like to welcome everyone to this, uh, our second webinar of this 2024. Uh, our previous webinar was about uh, safety and vacuum systems for um, additive manufacturing facilities. And in this opportunity, we are very happy to uh, host our friends of um, Farsun Technologies, who are the experts on uh, additive manufacturing of plastics and metals. So, uh, well, first of all, I would like to introduce you to my uh, colleague, uh, Ray, he is here. He will uh, be uh, introducing to you um, about the uh, uh, flight technology and the 403P um, 3D printer by Fertsun. But first, I, I will quickly start by introducing briefly to our company. Um, well, first of all, my name is Harry. I am additive uh, manufacturing engineer, and I dedicate to uh, business development at Additive Plus. We are an additive manufacturing um, company based in California, and we dedicate not only to additive manufacturing, but also uh, we provide atomizing solutions for laboratory. Uh, we uh, work with custom alloys for uh, metal additive manufacturing, and also we provide a 3D printing services and all the technology that is required for uh, additive manufacturing um, ecosystems. So uh, to speak very briefly about, uh, about us, uh, we have been uh, around 10 years in the additive manufacturing uh, area, and we work a lot with uh, academic institutions, with uh, universities, national laboratories, and uh, also aerospace, automotive, uh, and automotive uh, industry. Uh, we have uh, offices in Europe and the USA uh, with dozens of machines installed uh, all around the world. And we are uh, actively working in many uh, research and development um, additive manufacturing projects. We probably represent, as well as far soon, a 3D lab ATO technologies for a metal atomization robots for a FFF printing of a big uh, ultem and other materials, 3D ceram for advanced uh, ceramic material printing, and extra 3D for uh, ultra fast 3D printing, a King's 3D for ultra extra large. Uh, additive uh, manufacturing technologies in resin and FGM, uh, Delphine for vacuum systems, and Shining for scanners. We offer a complete 3D printing solutions for every industry. So uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, we will be hearing uh, and answering your questions. And also you can uh, reach out to us uh, or to my uh, colleagues, uh, Ashken uh, email. So you can uh, also reach out with uh, any questions or inquiries about uh, the technology we we work with. So thank you very much for your uh, patience during this uh, quick introduction to Additive Plus. Uh, I would like to uh, concede the word to my uh, colleague, uh, Ray. So thank you very much for uh, joining us today, Ray. Uh, Ray is the application engineer of uh, for Zoom, and he will uh, give us today with a he, he will help us today with a very nice um, presentation about a uh, flight technology. Hello, Ray. Hey, Harry. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first off, I just want to say thank you for attending today's live webinar. Uh, we're going to be exploring next level productivity uh, using Farsoon's flight technology. Uh, presented by Additive Plus and uh, Farsoon Technologies. Uh, so as Harry mentioned, my name is Ray Jones. I'm a polymer application spe specialist uh, from Farsoon Technologies based here in Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm excited to be here today uh, to share with everyone our innovative flight technology solution uh, that offers many specialized advantages that open brand new possibilities for functional in-use applications in automotive, healthcare, molds, tooling, and more. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at our agenda for today. Uh, first, we'll learn the basics, who Farsoon is, what materials we offer, 
as well as our industry partners on the key differences between fiber and standard CO2 SLS systems. Then we'll dive a little deeper into our flight systems and the opportunities that they unlock. And then uh, to wrap up today's webinar, we'll take a look at a couple of uh, far soon customer success, success stories using our flight technology. Uh, so Farsoon globally has grown exponentially in the last year as we've broken ground on our new headquarters offices at a new material factory, as well as hitting the 1000 mark for systems sold around the world. Farsoon Americas, which is located in Austin, Texas, uh, offers a dedicated local service team and inventory with key machine components sourced in the U.S. Farsoon Americas also offers a strong technical and application support team to assist customers on site in machine operation and material development or remote from our Austin office. Over 10 years of technology innovation, Farsoon has developed a comprehensive polymer machine portfolio, which features a wide range of build envelope and temperature uh, capabilities that suits many industry applications uh, from material development and series production to large scale parts and continuous manufacturing. In 2019, we announced our biggest technology innovation with our flight technology by replacing the CO2 laser, which is traditionally found in SLS systems with a fiber laser. This offers high speed production and fine detail feature options to Farsoon's SLS systems. Looking at our polymer system portfolio, we can see that Farsoon offers a variety of options uh, based on customer needs and budget. We offer a variety of build volumes uh, from 20 liter small batch production and material development systems to 72 liter serial production systems to 225 liter oversized part and mass production systems. Uh, max processing temperatures ranging anywhere from 190 to 280 degrees Celsius. Uh, our customers can really choose uh, and fit a machine to their specific needs and applications. Uh, Farsoon believes in an open material and platform environment. Uh, what this really means is that while Farsoon does manufacture our own PA-12, uh, both neat and filled variants, as well as a PA-6 glass filled material, uh, we partner with some of the industry's largest material manufacturers to help fill the gaps. Uh, this offers our material portfolio from base PA-12 materials to TPU and TPC, PA-11, both neat and filled variants, uh, polypropylene, PK5000, ESD materials, and many more. We have ready to go material parameter files for all of our partner materials, as well as processing assistance if needed. Additionally, as part of our open material platform philosophy, we open several key parameter values to the end user to fully assist in material processability. So comparing CO2 laser and fiber laser systems, we can see a couple of D key differences. The first key difference is laser beam spot size. Uh, traditionally, CO2 SLS systems use a laser with a spot size anywhere between 400 and 500 microns. Uh, this usually restricts our minimum feature size to about one millimeter uh, or about twice the size of the laser spot size. We can see through, or we can see though with a fiber laser, we can get down to around 100 microns in the contour or outline pass to get real fine feature details uh, around 0.3 millimeters. Uh, we were also able to open the fill pass to 1,000 microns, uh, which greatly decreases build times. Uh, the second key difference is laser power. Uh, the standard operating range of CO2 lasers is usually around 30 to 120 watts. Uh, so fiber lasers, which are traditionally used in metal laser powder bed fusion systems, uh, because of their more dynamic power range, can access wattages uh, between 300 and 500. Uh, this gives us not only overhead on material uh, processing ability, as some materials may need more laser energy at the bed than others, but this also unlocks a significant increase in scan speeds uh, from 10 meters per second on the low end to 20 meters a second. The last key difference between CO2 and fiber lasers is their average lifespan and operational stability. Uh, so on average, a CO2 laser has a lifespan of approximately 12,000 hours, or roughly between two to three years of operational use, depending on powder, power usage. Uh, power stability on the laser, uh, how much it drifts during operation, 
uh, can reach upwards of plus or minus 6% during extended continuous usage. Uh, on the other hand, a fiber laser, because of its unique construction, uh, has an average lifespan of about 100,000 hours or about 10 years. This significantly increases the value of the machine and reduces maintenance and replacement costs of multiple CO2 lasers over the same uh, period of time. So using a fiber laser unlocks more laser power, uh, which allows us to more easily process higher tier uh, engineering grade materials. Uh, traditionally to process materials like PA6 or PA66 or PEC, uh, which need higher energy densities at the part bed, uh, a double fill scan would be needed as most CO2 lasers can only safely reach about 100 to 120 watts on a single pass. Uh, so this primi primarily increases build time and laser life usage. Uh, with a max laser wattage of 300 watts on our dual flight laser system or 500 watts uh, on our single laser flight system, we can process these materials in a single scan at a much higher laser wattage. This can potentially cut build times by 50% and also increases laser component life because there's less stress uh, on the, the, the laser components. So what materials can the end user of our flight systems expect to use? Uh, as we can see, as of right now, there's an extensive list of materials uh, ranging from base PA-12 to PA-6, uh, PK, which is a polyketone material, uh, polypropylene, PA-11, NEAT, ESD, and carbon filled, and uh, some gray and black TPUs. Uh, as you've probably noticed from this list, uh, there's one common theme of all these materials, and they're all black or dark gray in appearance. Uh, it's because the wavelength of the fiber laser is only able to transfer its energy to dark materials. Uh, white materials kind of act a, like a, a mirror of sorts. They reflect the laser away from the part bed. Uh, that being said, there is some amazing work being done by some of our material partners to add additives to lighter materials to help aid in energy absorption so that we are able to process at a much wider range of uh, both white and dark materials in our flight systems. Uh, so kind of looking at uh, some material process processability issues with CO2, uh, traditional SLS technologies. Uh, one of the biggest obstacles uh, to processing TPU uh, with a CO2 laser is the amount of smoke and particulate that it produces during the centering process. Uh, this smoke and off gas finds its way to the laser window uh, where it reduces laser uh, power through the laser window at the part bed. Uh, so if you start at you know 40 watts after three or four hours of, of the centering process with all that smoke and particulate sticking to the laser window, you might actually be only getting you know, 20 or 15 watts at the part bed. Uh, so this requires either shorter builds to avoid the smoke buildup on the laser window or manually, per, manually going in and editing the laser wattage parameters uh, through the build process. Uh, another obstacle is the way that the material absorbs the laser energy. Uh, which results in slow centering speeds and low productivity. Uh, so I'm going to play a short video here um, of our flight system processing or TPU material. Uh, the first thing that we can see is that there is no smoke generation while using the fiber lasers. Uh, this keeps the laser window clean, which allows us to complete full Z height builds uh, with little to no operator interaction. Uh, the way that the TPU material absorbs the energy from the laser, uh, the fiber laser also allows us to utilize the max scan speeds of our flight systems to increase productivity and machine turnaround. So one of the better use cases for TPU in our flight systems is uh, shoe soles. Uh, it's kind of the the rage right now in, in, in SLS. You've probably been to Dick's or Academy or any of these uh, sporting goods stores and you can see, uh, you know, the Adidas or Under Armour, they have this uh, lattice outer sole. Uh, with the flight system, we were able to pack the build envelope with 50 shoe soles uh, and we were able to accomplish a full build in 17 hours, uh, which if anyone has ever processed lattice structures in SLS can attest to the long layer times just because of the uh, complexity of the, the lattice designs, there's a lot of uh, laser jumps. Uh, so not only were we able to take advantage of the ease of possibility with fiber lasers, but also the increased scan speeds. 
So to take a look at our Flight 403 production platform, uh, the 403 is a bottom fed single or dual laser SLS system uh, with a build envelope of 400 by 400 by 450 millimeters and a max process uh, chamber temperature of 220 degrees Celsius. Uh, the feature that makes the system unique is that is, it is equipped with removable feed and build cartridges. This allows for faster machine turnover uh, compared to a lot of other SLS options, as op operators can stand uh, or stage next build ready cartridges and hop swap them uh, with depleted feed cartridges and completed build cartridges. Uh, you can see number one is our feed cartridge, number two is our build cartridge. So once a build is completed, we can remove those and uh, insert a filled feed cartridge and an empty build cartridge into the machine, load up our, uh, our build and push go. As we move right, we can see some accessories developed by Farsoon to increase machine turnover and product productivity. Our external cooling box and cooling station greatly decrease the cooling times of completed builds in a user-controlled inert environment. Uh, this not only increases productivity, but also ensures material and part properties. Uh, some materials like your PA6 materials, your high, high temp processing materials, uh, naturally take longer to cool down, uh, one, because they are processing at a higher uh, temperature, but also because uh, we really need to preserve those mechanical properties, whether they be tensile strength, elongation. Uh, so being able to take that uh, build out and being able to put it in an inert environment to preserve those mechanical properties uh, is really important for the in-use application of those parts. Uh, We've also developed and will soon release a integrated closed loop breakout sieve and mix powder management system. Uh, this is number five on the right hand side. Uh, the system has the capability to sieve and mix large volumes of material uh, to then be used in subsequent builds that use the same type of material. That is a closed loop system, so we do recommend uh, having it primarily for, for one, one material, two at max. Uh, so I'm going to play this video right here. Uh, this really showcases and drives home uh, what I've been discussing up to this point, uh, comparing CO2 to flight. Uh, so our CO2 system is on the left corner. Our single fiber laser system is the right corner. And middle bottom is our dual fiber laser system. Uh, we can see that our dual laser system is able to scan a layer of 20 parts in 26 seconds. The CO2 system can scan uh, five parts in the same time frame, and while the single fiber laser system was able to scan the outline of all 20 parts, it was only able to scan eight full parts. So far soon, manufactures the industry's largest SLS platform, a system equipped with either two or four 300 watt fiber lasers. Uh, the 1001 offers a build envelope measuring 1000 by 500 by 450 millimeters, uh, which is three times that of our 403 system. The 1001 platform is a top feed side loading conveyor based system that is ideal for either producing large scale parts that traditionally uh, would have to be produced in multiple parts and joined together in post processing or large scale production runs of small to medium sized parts. Uh, additionally, the 1001 can be equipped with an optional cooldown station uh, that actively cools one build while a second build is in the build process, so actively centering. Uh, this cooldown station uses an active nitrogen supply uh, to cool builds in a closed inert environment. Uh, so to put into perspective the, le the level of productivity that our flight systems offer over tra traditional SLS technologies uh, or other additive technologies such as MJF, uh, we put together a full packout build of the same standard size parts uh, and an MJF build envelope, our standard CO2 403 system, our single and dual laser flight 403 systems, and then our dual and quad laser 1001 flight systems. Uh, so as you can see uh, from the start, our 403 system has an advantage being able to fit almost 100 more parts into its build area. Uh, looking at our standard CO2 laser system, the HT403, which is comparable to most midsize SLS systems currently on the market, 
Uh, we can see that although, yes, we are able to nest 266 parts into the build envelope, uh, we are looking at a 25 hour build, uh, which is not quite ideal. Uh, and that's where our single flight laser uh, system comes into play. We're able to cut down the build time to a little over 16 hours uh, for 266 parts. Uh, that gives us one and a half times the productivity yield in just about the same amount of time uh, as a, the MJF system. Uh, moving to our dual laser flight system, we can see that we can uh, cut down that build time even further to a mere 10 hours, giving us two and a half times uh, the productivity yield. That's 266 parts in 10 hours compared to 168 parts in 13 hours. Uh, moving on to our dual fiber laser, large platform 1001 system, we can see that the larger build envelope allows us to nest 784 parts uh, and complete a build within 18 hours for a productivity yield of four times that of some of our competitors uh, or even our own uh, CO2 machines. Uh, finally, to round out our system comparison, I wanna take a look at our quad laser 1001 system. Uh, as we can see, we're able to match that 13 hour build time and produce 784 parts. Uh, that's almost five times the amount of parts built in the same 13 hour time frame advertised by some of our competitors. So uh, I wanna take a look at a couple uh, customer use cases using our flight technology uh, and some of our uh, materials that have been uh, developed specifically for our flight systems. Uh, so the first customer success story I wanna take a look at uh, is this three piece molded fiber tooling set. Uh, this was created in our FS3201 material uh, using the dual laser 403 flight system. Uh, the customer was able to custom design a cavity mold as one piece to avoid sectioning and machining uh, the part in a, a traditionally manufactured type environment. Uh, utilizing the flight system fine detail ca capabilities, the customer was then able to design a mesh screen mold insert uh, that with detailed mesh density and wall thickness. Uh, finally, utilizing the materials and mechanical strength, the customer was able to create the final component, the mold body uh, that was used to apply pressure uh, to form the desired molded part. Uh, being able to design the exact part that they needed, the customer achieved an accelerated design to production cycle and reduced manufacturing cost by 97%. Uh, next, I want to highlight two different automotive applications using our PA6 glass fill material. Uh, the first is an NVH cover uh, printed in our uh, 6140 GF, uh, which is our glass fill PA6, uh, using the Flight 403 system. This customer was able to create a unique sound dampening design to reduce structural and ambient noise uh, with the added bonus of structural strength and impact resistance, which are both important components to under the hood applications. Uh, the second application is an indoor speaker mounting bracket, also printed in our PA6 glass film material. Uh, being able to present the full packet bracket as one part greatly reduced lead times and material and labor costs while also taking advantage of the structural strength of the design uh, being one complete piece instead of joining two or three pieces together. Uh, one of the strengths of SLS is being able to design, you know, custom parts for your in-use app, in applications. Uh, one of my favorite applications is this automotive uh, headlight housing and assembly uh, printed in our 3201 material. Uh, this customer had a unique design in mind and was able to print the housing and assembly as one part, uh, post-process the part and install it directly into their car. Uh, over traditional manufacturing means, this process saved uh, in the production process and at a cost reduction of 98%. Uh, the last set of automotive customer applications I want to kind of showcase are ducts and airflow pipes. Uh, our first application is a complex multi-channel air duct printed in our 3201 material. Uh, utilizing the strength of our material, the customer was able to print this part with improved structural integrity and in one piece over to traditional manufacturing methods. Uh, the second air duct needed uh, high temperature and corrosion resistant properties that our 6140 PA6 glass filled material excels in. Uh, 
Uh, this customer was able to print this custom fitted part in the 403 utilizing an engineer grade uh, material with ease. Uh, and the last application is a multi-directional airflow pipe, uh, which was printed on our 6140 PA6 material. Uh, this customer was able to design a part with an integrated structural design uh, using material that met their tensile strength requirements and utilizing the fiber laser system. Uh, they were able to achieve uh, their accuracy and tolerance specifications. Uh, and last customer application I want to showcase is in healthcare uh, with a mid-layer uh, orthotic insole and knee brace. Uh, customizability uh, using SLS technology is a perfect fit for shoe wear, uh, as I mentioned previously, especially with sole correction and arch support. Uh, being able to scan a patient's foot and, and print a tailored insole is key. Uh, using a strong but flexible material like a 32 or one. Uh, allows the wearer to use this part on a daily basis without any show of wear or tear uh, or fear of the part breaking down in everyday use. Uh, same can be said for knee braces. Uh, they can be fully customized for each individual patient's needs. Uh, using BASF's PA11 material in conjunction with our flight technology, uh, the customer was able to create a lightweight design uh, that was comfortable for the, the user and was also breathable utilizing uh, BASF's uh, uh, material uh, properties and capabilities. Uh, so that includes uh, our presentation on exploring next level, next level productivity with flight technology. Uh, if you're gonna be at AMA next month, feel free to stop by our booth to further discuss our flight systems or any of our other industry leading solutions. We'll be happy to, uh, to sit you down and talk your ear off about uh, all of our products. Uh, so thank you for attending this morning. Uh, now we'll be open uh, to any questions that, that anyone may have. I'm sorry, I, I was muted. Thank you very much for your presentation, Ray. It, it was very interesting to see how uh, you, can, you can improve the productivity using the flight uh, technology. Uh, in case uh, someone from uh, our attendees has uh, any question, you can uh, just unmute yourselves and make the question, or you can send it to our chat. In the meantime, uh, Ray, I, I would like to ask you a, a very quick question about, um, about the flight technology. So uh, you mentioned that a uh, fly technology can uh, exceed in the uh, speed of printing to uh, CO2 uh, technology, but is there any uh, other advantages that you you can share with us, like in a brief summary uh, for, for us? Yeah, so uh, scan speed is uh, the the main draw uh, the attraction for this technology but uh feature size too uh, we can get down to 0.3 millimeters in feature size and wall thickness uh, which is uh, less than half of what we can get in in our co2 technologies uh, so fine feature details uh, is really key uh, especially in some smaller type applications small gears uh, electrical components, fuse boxes, uh, things like that, where you still need uh, mechanical strength, but you also need fine feature detail. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, from our attendees, uh, do you, we have any new questions? I have one question uh, for you, Ray. Um, on the white development, do you have any uh, time frame on that? Uh, currently, no. Uh, I, I wish I did. I know that it is currently in development. Uh, if you if you want to send uh, either uh, either myself uh, or Harry an email, uh, is, is there any particular material that, that you're interested in or just kind of full spectrum? Um, probably like PA-12, PA-12 uh, with any kind of blends to it. Okay. And maybe a lens as well. Okay. Yeah, uh, I can definitely, uh, when, when information starts becoming more uh, 
public, let's say, I, I would definitely uh, be more than willing to, to share some information with you. I, I, I also have a question about the, the white uh, powder. So um, I, I know that usually uh, carbon black is used to, to stain the powder, to, to have a black or gray powder. So um, clear additives for, for the fiber laser are much, much, much more expensive than carbon black. So this was up to now uh, usually the problem. That, that everybody uses uh, carbon black. So, and I have another question about the uh, PA6 material. Is that a fiber filled material or is it a pearl? So PA6 with pearl, glass pearls or with glass fibers? Yes, the PA6 is glass fiber filled. Uh, it's a 40-60 blend. Is it a dry blend? Yes. Okay, so so refresh rate is. Uh, you know, you know, you know the refresh rate, or we usually try to aim uh between forty and fifty percent uh new material. Uh, obviously, our our end users uh can play around with refresh rate depending on what type of mechanical properties they're they're looking for. Uh, but we've we've developed uh, some mixing uh, or, or powder management systems, our, our PMS system. Uh, we've developed that system to uh, utilize high speed mix mixing to uh, preserve or extend the life of of used materials. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Bern and team. Do we have any more questions? Um, I may uh, have one more question um, about what other solutions do uh, Farsoon provide to the um, uh, in the market uh, apart from a uh, plastics technologies. Uh, so we do offer metals machines as well. Uh, we have a full line of uh, metal laser powder bed fusion machines, uh, kind of mirroring our polymer systems. We have uh, small machines for more material development work. And then we have large uh, two-story machines that are bigger than my house uh, for uh, like rocket engines, large, large scale manufacturing parts. Uh, so we do offer uh, polymer and metals, uh, but we do offer, again, our uh, external cooling stations, our, we sell breakout stations, uh, mixers, uh, our powder management system. Uh, so we, we kind of offer, and of course, our, our own materials as well. We, we, like I said, we do manufacture a lot of our own materials that we offer at a competitive price uh, compared to a lot of our competitors. So. Uh, we, we try to have our, our uh, hands as, as many honey pots as we can, per se, uh, to really offer uh, any type of, of application solution to, to, um, to our customers. Great. So thank you very much, Ray, uh, for your presentation and, and also for uh, responding to our questions. And I would like to finish uh, this uh, webinar with um, with an invitation. So you can visit our uh, YouTube channel where we will be a, where, where we have uh, our previous webinar recordings. Uh, we had a, we, we previously host uh, webinars about uh, ceramic technologies, uh, vacuum systems. And our next webinar will be about uh, also uh, ceramic technologies. And the next one will be um, about a large format uh, printing with SLA. So you are all invited and please uh, keep tuned uh, with our social media where we'll be 
posting about uh, our next uh, and upcoming e events. So thank you very much for today and have a great week ahead to everyone. Thank you, everyone.